Hi, and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. This is just a short video that I'm recording to address a specific uh, question, something somebody asked in the online study forums for the CFP core curriculum. And I thought it would be an interesting topic to go through in a little video. We should be about uh, maybe 12 or 13 minutes here. And the topic is around adjusting household expenses based on a change in the number of people in the household. Now, we're going to look at adjusting for household size, and we'll look at the theory behind this, and then we'll do a couple of practice runs of the math. So the first scenario that you would see here often is with a separating couple, and we'll actually do an example of this in a couple of minutes here. This would be, you have a client, a financial planning client, they're a couple together, happy, all that good stuff, and then the relationship ends, and now they have two households to maintain. So what happens to their expected monthly expenses? Or similarly, you have a child they're bringing into the household, we'll also do this example, or a child moving out. So really any number of circumstances that we could see from a financial planning scenario where we're adding or taking somebody away. This might be a, an adult child moves back in, or you might have grandparents who end up having to take care of the uh, grandkids from a, a custodial perspective. Lots of different financial planning scenarios where we change the size of the household. Now, this theory is something that comes from uh, the science of demographics. Uh, statisticians have drawn these numbers up, and these are two common accepted methods that we see here. There's the square root method, which is kind of a neat method where basically you attach a factor to spending based on the square root of the number of people in the household. It's interesting, uh, the numbers here are not quite round, so a lot of folks will sort of use this equivalent scale, which gives you round numbers and also, this works a little bit better as you get into larger households. If you get seven, eight, nine people or whatever, we just start adding 0.3 to each of these subsequent numbers. I'm gonna use the equivalence scale method. I do like the square root method. Um, I'm not a demographer, so I don't have a preference one way or the other. Honestly, uh, this does become a little bit of a rule of thumb in an individual circumstance, you would be better off to go through and actually explore the household expen or household expenditures in some detail and try, the, try to hammer those out. That's often a challenge though, and especially when you're anticipating a circumstance. So uh, the couple comes to you and says, hey, look, we're separating what's this going to do to our household spending. Well, you can't pull out the crystal ball and look a year from the road and say your household spending will be this much. But this gives you, this tool gives you a way to at least come to some sort of a reasonable estimate. Let's see how it works here. I think if you get to see how it works, that'll help a little bit. So in our uh, sample problem, I've got Stan and Amanda going through a divorce. And to this point, we know that their household expenses have typically been around $5,000 a month there are two kids in the household. And Stan and Amanda are both going to end up with custody of the kids. Now this might shake out over time, but this means initially we do have two three-person households here. That's We're uh, sort of switching from one four-person household, and now we have two three-person households. And the question is, what is it going to cost us now for two three-person households? So this is where we've got to do a little bit of math. Now the math is not difficult, but it does sort of take us back to like grade six or grade seven thereabouts. And I know not everybody has necessarily done this math recently, but basically what I can see here is that I have currently a four person household and we're going to use the factor of two. So I've got $5,000 of expenses. So we'll say 5,000 is to two as our new number, our unknown number, which we'll call X here, is to the three-person household. The three-person household, the next number up the chart here, a three-person household uses a factor of 1.7. So 
5,000 is to two as X is to 1.7. And based on that, I can do some relatively simple math. Although again, if it's been a while since you've done that math, don't beat yourself up too much. I'm going to walk through it here. I'll show you exactly how the math works. So that's X over 5,000 then, and we just have to do our order of operations. Division is the first thing I'm going to do here. 1.7 divided by two is 0.85 or 85% if you prefer. So now X over 5,000 is 0.85. I have to isolate X. This is that simple bit of algebra we have to do. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 5,000. So when I do that, I've isolated X now, and I have X equals 0.85 times 5,000. And that's how I get my final answer here, which is that our three-person households should each have expenses of $4,250. And that would be our then anticipated expenses per household. Post-separation. Now, this might cause you to sit down with Stan and Amanda, whichever one, or if both of them end up still being your clients, then working through that issue. But for now, you're kind of stuck with that as your anticipated expenses. I hope this leads to a budgeting discussion because it doesn't seem realistic that they would be able to come up with 90, or sorry, with $8,500. That's what that would be, 4250 times two. It's gonna cost them over $3,500 more to be separated than it is a, did as a one person, or as a, a single unit. And we know that. We know that separation and divorce are not cheap decisions. This is just an example of that problem. Now let's look at another similar issue. Now we have an addition to the household. We have Nick and Wendy who currently spend about $6,000 a month and they're about to have a child. Now having a baby can be a little bit unusual because there are some uh, sort of spiky expenses early but maybe we're concerned here about the longer term. So we might set aside some money to cover off the loss of income for caregiver, paying for childcare possibly, uh, the uh, diapers and so forth and uh, kitting out a, a baby room and so forth buying clothing but once you're sort of established you should expect then that you're now taking care of a three-person household rather than a two-person household so in this case we have what is currently a two-person household which is a factor of 1.4 so I would say then that 6,000 is to 1.4 as we're now going to boost this up to a three-person household. So as our factor then becomes 1.7, so now what we don't know is what the new expenses are. That'll be X as X is to uh, 1.7. And now, once again, I can do this math. This math is a little bit more difficult, uh, but it's the same math. I really just have to get to the point where I isolate X. So I'm gonna do uh, 6,000 over X. I'm just going to do my quick bit of division here. Uh, 1.4 divided by 1.7 is 0.8235 or 82.35%. We're gonna look at it. And now I'm going to uh, bring X over. I'm gonna multiply both sides by X. So that'll make that 6,000 equals 0.8235X. And now I'll divide both sides by 0.8235. So I'll have 6,000 now divided by 0.8235. And that will be equal to X So now I would say that, just divide that out, 6,000 divided by 0.8235, that's $7,286. That's my X now. So what I should expect is that our household spending increases by about $1,286. Now again, that would be a, a broad statistical average, not quite a rule of thumb, but rather a broad statistical average. And you'll certainly find exceptions to that. Again, this goes back to how good is the crystal ball and we get a year, two years, three years down the road and we'll have better fidelity around this. 
but as far as projecting out what this might look like, this is going to give me at least a reasonable uh, set of expectations. I hope that helps. I hope that's not too mathy for some of us um, or too hypothetical for some of us maybe. Again, I find it a useful tool. Otherwise, it's difficult to know what happens to your household income or household expenses as the size of the household uh, shrinks and grows. If you do have any questions about it, feel free to fire me an email. Otherwise, enjoy your continued studies and thank you very much for joining us.